being an entrepreneur is is like carrying a heavy backpack you know okay uh just you're responsible for the weights that you put inside of it okay and the heavier it is the the heavier your mental health is. i really learned that when things are going good just to kind of stay like really calm no matter how good they are just stay really calm and even when they're going bad like stay really calm it's all like for me it's it's a lot about kind of managing like that that baseline that you have now it's okay to kind of waver a yep. little bit mm -hmm. but you have to have to manage the baseline you can't be going up and down up and down yeah, yeah. venture hustles life is really what you make it make it. building up your brand is whatever you created uh, really ain't no limit uh, you just gotta love it uh, working day and night it's all about the venture hustle hey venture hustles time to take it to the next level let's go Welcome to the Venture Hustles podcast. I'm your co-host, Saj, and with me, as always, is my dynamic partner in podcasting, Mr. Jack. How are we doing? Good. Today, we're tackling a huge topic, mm. the intersection of mental health and entrepreneurship. So we're going to chat about the roller coaster ride that is starting and running a business, the toll it can take, and how it messes with your decision-making and creativity. Um, and we're also going to be getting personal. So we're going to be sharing some of our own mental health tales. Uh, but it's not going to be all doom and gloom. So we've, we've got some practical tips on how to stay mentally fit, like exercising, taking breaks, and even talking to a therapist. We're also covering how to make your workplace uh, even more mental health friendly. Mm. So whether you're a startup whiz, a seasoned business owner, or just someone curious about mental health, this episode's for you. So, are we ready? Let's dive in, my friend. Let's dive, Let's dive in. in. So, man, well, how are we doing? How's uh, how's the how's the week been so far? How's how's we're the doing, mental health? Been we're we're doing week? good. Mental health has been has been good uh, thus far. No, no complaints as of yet. You know, we've uh, we f figured out a nice baseline. I think. You know, mm -hmm. after a while, I get to figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what some of those stress relievers, let's say, might be. So it's been, it's been going pretty well. How about yourself? Yeah, it's going pretty well. I think uh, I, I, I'm glad that we're talking about this today, actually, because yeah. I, I don't think we've ever touched base on, on this idea. Yeah. And, and this issue, let's say. And I think that over the last, you know, 10 years, this has become a little bit more normal to talk about. For sure, especially over the last four you know yeah yeah four or five years i i would agree i would agree with that and i think that you know people are just a lot more comfortable but there are still a lot of people that struggle with this and struggle with this from a personal and professional perspective yeah. so i think you know hopefully we're able to shed some light on on, on our our um experiences here yeah 100 percent, and just kind of giving some some light to you know some struggles let's say that that we might have experienced and mm -hmm. you know if, if even 10 seconds of what we're talking about can help someone figure out their own journey well, that's that's really the goal here you know so right i mean typically we're in a world me and you mm -hmm. where mental health is an an issue or concern or it just plays a role in our day-to-day -day operations because of just the high stress environments that we're in yeah right and juggling that between a personal life, family, mm -hmm. responsibilities, mm -hmm. and then, of course, professional responsibilities, burdens that you put on yourself. Yes. Uh, burdens put on yourself by uh, outside entities and third parties. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everything pl uh, comes into play. And um, I, I, I am personally no expert in this matter. I've, I've seek, I, I'll talk about this more later on today, but yeah. I've, 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 I've seeked professional help in the past mm -hmm. and um i was one of those people that i was very closed off to yeah getting help so I, I would i would definitely be open to talking more about that and okay. i can say that you know one of those things that w where we live such heavy just non-stop lives and not to not to brag or anything i mean it's, it's not fun all the time no. but, but the reality is like that's just the environments that we're in it's inevitable that people like me and you will deal with these things. Well, a lot of know? times, you know, I, I agree with everything that you said. And, you know, a lot of times 
it's almost like an afterthought, you know, where, yes, we're talking about it. And a lot of times we know that it's important or that it could impact. But again, it's more of an afterthought where, you know, the train still keeps moving almost, you know what I mean? And so you got to do the best you can. And I think you said it best where as you have experience, as you kind of start to go through some of these obstacles, you know, yep. whether you seek professional help or whether you kind of figure out your own system or your own um, things or activities that you do to whether it's blow off steam or just relax, mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of got to figure yourself out, you know, yeah. a lot of times and because not everyone's the same and everyone will, you know, what might work for me might not work for you and, and vice versa. I I agree. And I think that you know, as we, I, I guess one of the things that we're going to be focusing on is just staying on brand, right? With, with you know, we're mostly going to be talking about entrepreneurship, the business yeah. journey, yeah. Uh, you know, just different moments that, that, you know, of course, within the mental health spectrum, it's so wide yes. um, and there's just so much. Uh, I, I, I'll personally say that I know a lot of people that struggle with mental health mm -hmm. and uh, with, with mental health problems and mm -hmm. issues. Um, on the daily people that are taking seeking help and people yeah. that aren't and I can say that th their problems are significantly more complex and different than than the things that I deal with when it comes to mental health issues so I don't want to um, diminish or overlook any of uh, anybody else mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just want to say from my perspective and your perspective of course that we're only sharing what we what we what we go through absolutely and we're not really speaking for anybody in general and I can I I, I I can tell, I can know and acknowledge that, uh, that there's far more complicated. Well, it's almost like the, the old saying where, you know, if everyone threw their problems in a pile, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised at how, how quick you would run, grab yours and, and get out of there. Uh, but let me ask you this, Saj. Yeah. Can you describe a time where, you know, the responsibility, let's say of running a business kind of took a toll on your mental health? Yeah, I mean, there's so, there's just so many moments. I think you know, in, in a nutshell, the just running a business is like trying to navigate like a ship in the dark. You like know, the Titanic. You <laughs> have to go. There. <laughs> uh, you just you, yeah yeah. You never know what's ahead until you collide with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, it, it's important that we develop personal strategies to deal with stress. Yes. Uh, you know, from a particular time when I guess you know running a business t took my purse took a toll on my mental health yeah i've been in this space for like 12 years now you yeah. know roughly and i can say that at its highs you tend to overlook things mm -hmm. and it's there the mental health the stress the anxiety the the problems and everything else is there but you you have blinders on mm -hmm. you know but during big moments, I mean, one of the biggest things I think I've ever gone through personally was in in recent years, and, and I'm sure you know um, of certain moments, right? Where I've always I've learned how to manage my professional switch, my on off switch, very early on. Mm -hmm. So when I show up to work and I have to deal with everybody on my team and everyone else, my goal is to kind of Sometimes it's difficult. It cu cuts, fits through the crack. But my goal is to make sure that nobody knows that anything's kind of going on. Right? right. I don't know if that's healthy. But the reality is when you're a leader, you have to be able to kind of operate Medicaid. in a certain way. Yep. Mm -hmm. And but I was going through those moments. There's some really, really dark times. But, you know, from to, from a from a professional standpoint that, you know, the, the health, the stress um, was overbearing to the point where I shut it off. You know, I didn't, I didn't really, at that time I didn't really seek uh, professional help. I should have, cause I think it would have better um, help mitigate the problems and, okay. and, and, and issues. Well, but so how did you manage it then? Or are you saying that you just kind of put it to the side this almost? This particular or? time, uh -huh. the, the, some of the worst times that I've had, Yeah. Um, I didn't manage it too well. Okay. Um, I chose to ignore it. That, and and okay. I'm just being completely honest and vulnerable. About yeah. It, right. Because the reality is I'd come home and, you know, my, 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 my wife and, and she would like, she would see it. But even then I would like, it would be one of those things where when you're putting in so many hours of work and you have to deal with family and you have to deal with, I, I just don't, I didn't even want to 
answer or explain things to people anymore. Yeah. I just wanted to internalize it and just get it sorted. Yep. Yep. Um, because er, the next day would be the same thing, yep. the same thing, the over same thing. And, and I'm not the type of person that ever lets, like I can, I feel like I have the world's burden on my shoulders, but I will never display it. I will never, like maybe I'll talk about it with you to, mm -hmm. with close people, but I will never display it. And I'll never say that. Oh yeah, man, I can't do this because X, Y, Z. I'll still keep the train rolling. And I'm not saying that's healthy. I'm just telling you that that's how I operate it. Now though, I have to say after we've kind of gone through the shit times with no help. Um, and I'll talk about this more later on. Yeah. I figured out, certain ways where I can manage that a lot, lot better. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to draw some contrast on that, you know? So okay. uh, well, I guess we'll talk about that more. I mean, can you share a moment, I guess, mm -hmm. where, where uncertainty in your business journey spiked up your anxiety or something similar? Many. It doesn't have to be anxiety. Yeah. Um, well, I think anxiety is a good one um, because number one, like for me, I experience it, you know, and, and also we've all experienced it, whether it's business related or just life related. But I mean, I, I can remember, you know, many times for me, you know, over the last probably two to three years where there's just a lot of, I think a lot of times uncertainty and doubt kind of breed anxiety, right? So for me, you know, when I was experiencing those two things, at first it's like you're worrying about the unknown. That's kind of where the anxiety comes into play. And, and a lot of times I would act in a very similar manner where that you had just mentioned where like for me, if I'm going through problems or I'm going through issues, um, whether it's anxiety related, stress related, I, a lot of times I do my best to not burden anyone else. I try to internalize it. I try to think about, think through these problems, you know, internally, because I don't want to worry, or I don't want to worry, um, or have my family worry about how I'm doing, what I, I'm doing. Same way. Do you think that's healthy, though? You know, I think that. I mean, I think the reality is probably not. Um, I do think that it's very healthy to have someone or a group of people that you can talk about it yes. with, and but. At the end of the day, again, you know, like I would never, I don't want to worry or I don't want my, let's say my parents to worry about, you know, things that are happening in my professional life or even, you know, personal life to, to, to a certain standpoint. And I don't think it's healthy, but I, I also think a part of me feels as if it's kind of needed because I think when you go through such dark times, you also kind of figure out a lot more about yourself you understand yourself a lot yeah. more and without those dark times you know you may not even have you know unlocked those doors so you know although kind of looking back those times were were horrible right but again as you kind of for me like as i go through life as i have these different experiences like you are your own sculptor you know like you i like that as a man you know you when you were born you're a blank slate and as you go through life you know you you are the block and then you're also the person that's kind of carving, you know? So those times are horrible, but as you go through it again, you know, now you can never like duplicate those experiences, you know? So it's like a scar, but it's almost like, yeah, like I learned from that. I'm better now. And if that happens next time, yeah, I know how to handle myself and, and kind of move forward, you know? Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I think, um, I don't know. Anytime I've ever told someone that this is how I've handled it on these high stress situations, they've always said, hey, man, that's not healthy. And then I, I, I didn't really care. But the, the reality is there are really good ways to be yes. able to manage them. And I think I've learned that, honest to God, this year. Mm -hmm. I've learned that this year. Wow. And, and, and uh, it took me almost 10 plus years of just living that stress crazy environment and mm -hmm. and and thinking that it was normal you know thinking that i don't i don't need to solve it but the reality is you're so much more efficient you do know? you think like on that point do you think that let's say during those times do you ever feel like let's say even if you were to tell xyz person about some of the stress or the problems whatever it might be the mm -hmm. the the things that are making you feel that particular way like almost as if 
I'm not going to say they're not qualified because that's not really the right verbiage, but it's almost like they really wouldn't even understand even if you tried explaining it. So I guess my question to you is, is it more about talking it through with someone, even though they might not know or not be able, might not be able to give you the best help, let's say, or is it really just about kind of airing it out, just kind of talking about it, no matter what the response is, no matter if that person can even provide any sort of help or insight? So th that's a really good question, right? Yeah. Because I think I think if I really think about it, yeah. Before I went to let's say therapy, mm -hmm. I I always looked at therapists as like, hey, these guys are just paid goons, <laughs> and uh, they're not going to care about what I say, right? Yeah. Why they're just paid to sit there and listen? Yeah. And no matter how deep dark my problems are, yeah, they're just sitting there and telling me things that I want to hear. Yeah. Based on science, right? Okay. And and how you should react if someone says A and then you see say B. So I always had that negative mindset about that, which didn't like when I lost my brother. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's been a while now, right? And uh, when that happened, a lot of people and a really good close friend of mine. She's uh, she she was she's a therapist now, but she she's going to school oh. for that. And she said, "Hey, because we were friends, she, she couldn't she couldn't you know." Uh, advise me like that but she said hey I can recommend you to a couple therapists like I think you should talk because I was I was really struggling at that time yeah I can and, imagine yeah man and then um, I didn't do it it was okay. just one of those mindset things right I did not do it but over the years it, that changed but the reality is I always thought like man they're just paid to listen yeah. if you think about if you have good people in your life mm -hmm. where you can you can sit down you can talk to them and even if they don't say anything back or give you advice or feedback back if they're just listening that does a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, I and I'm and I'm I don't practice what I preach. I should be doing that a lot more. I should mm -hmm. be debriefing. You know, I, I try to do that a lot more with my family now. Yeah. But the reality is, like, let's say when my girl, she's like, "Hey, I just want to vent. I want to just talk to you. I want to get things out." Like we've established that sometimes That's good. it's just good to just sit down and listen. Yeah. Uh, listen to their problems because they just need to get it out. That's mm -hmm. really what therapy is in a way. Yeah. Um, now. If I'm looking for some high level advice and feedback on high stress situations that are not too emotional, there's X, Y, Z people I tap into. Correct. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And that, that was, it's, I, the reason I asked that question is because I almost, it's kind of like a line mm -hmm. about, cause like the feeling is the same, but then it's really just about the, the actual subject of the conversation almost pretty much going back to what you said where you're not going to share the same you're not going to have the same kind or share the same subjects uh of conversation with let's say your family members then compared to let's say some of those people that are in your mastermind or anyone in your network let's say you know that's kind of the line that that was attempting to draw let's yeah. say the difference yeah. you know people don't think about it like that man uh and i i'm telling you i was like one of those people uh, I was one of those people. It's, it's a very toxic mindset, I think. It and definitely can be because it's almost like a snowball that keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And then at some point, oh, you're going to have a breaking point, yes. right? Yes. Uh, it just comes with having an alpha mindset. It, mm -hmm. I think that's just what it is, and I, I don't sure. think it's. I don't think it's good. And I think a lot of people think that. Oh man, you need to. You're talking to a therapist. You're. 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 A, you're a bitch or X Y Z or like whatever a, it is. Like Tony Soprano in. Uh, uh, in he has a couple episodes where he goes to a therapist and like he's ashamed like to tell like all of his you know associates and stuff. I know he that's felt like no. I I mean I forgot the name of the show for a second. Oh my god, I'm ashamed of myself. The yeah, I, I know it's <laughs> The Sopranos, but I literally forgot the name of the show for a second. Oh my god, go ahead. No, I, and I think. It's that's exactly what it is. People people don't like talking about it. People don't like. I've actually comfortable. Like in conversations and family and stuff like that. Like when people talk about their personal issues or uh, when they're telling me something about their relationship, and I'm like, hey man, yeah, I've been to therapy for this. Like I I, I can I can comfortably talk about it. I don't have yeah. any shame about it. I don't like. It's not a taboo. It's like nothing nothing weird about it, man. It's yeah. just if you need help, seek help. Mm -hmm. If you if you are tapped out internally. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it doesn't make you a less man or a woman. Like for you to be able to go out and um, just just admit that you need help and then seek that. But you're just going to be better. I think my, you know, obviously this is not about personal relationships. And we're talking more from a business standpoint, dealing mm -hmm. with mental health and stress. But I can tell you that one of the biggest turning points in terms of how I deal with stress overall, uh, not stress, but like, 
tight situations okay. like that, that that are difficult to navigate around. Okay. Um, stemmed from I've been married, right? Mm-hmm. So stemmed from marriage, and okay. marriage is one of the hardest things. It is hard, more hardcore than a full time job. It is one of the hardest things a human being can do. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, I, th- I think a lot of people that have been in, in married for years. It is super, super, super complicated. You, there's so many different things that come about that you don't see when you're, let's say, dating somebody. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're living with someone for years. Everything changes with the minute that you put a title on. The responsibilities, the future, the planning, the scope. So a lot of that just hit me like a, like a, like a train, and hit her as well. And then we we struggled, but then we we got help. And then when we did get help, okay. I swear to God. That changed a lot of things for me, and I've always talked about it. Um, moving forward, the way I handle with high stress situations, the way I handle with um, heated situations, you know, in both personal and professional, and I, I feel like I was a lot more centered. Okay, you know, so well, how did you? So how do you now strive to kind of balance, you know, the personal uh, life with with the business life and? You know, what are some of the challenges? You know, I know you just kind of briefly mentioned that, but what are some of the challenges do you think uh, now that you face kind of trying to achieve this balance, let's say? I think the, the, the wave that we're both on that, that we did this year, which was it, it was like a mental fortitude challenge that we did this year, and that changed, I think, everything for me. Mm-hmm. I used to be the guy that would say that, you know, if I was an athlete or if I – I, I was going to make a TikTok about this, but uh, it was like, it, it was like, I always used to be the guy that said, I'll care about my, ment- my, my physical fitness and my mental fitness. If, if like, if I wasn't like all these athletes, I'd look at them and be like, man, this is, they get paid for this. This is mm-hmm. their job. They can work out twice a day. They don't have to worry about anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, they wake up, they work out, they hang out the whole day and then they go home, they eat something healthy. And like, I would think like this, mm-hmm. right? It, it's a really shitty mindset, but the reality is, I would try to justify how hectic my life was. Yeah. Like the 100 plus hours a week that you would work and say that I don't have time to do what they're doing to get fit mm-hmm. or to have a clear mind. And I would think that that was an okay justification. Yeah. What we did this year, which was incredibly hardcore in the middle of a rebuild and um, uptrend year for us, um, was a mental fortitude challenge. And when we completed it, I was on a high, but I've continued to maintain those healthy habits and lifestyle. Yeah. That alone really, really helps balance work and personal life. You know, um, personal life, you start seeing things and moments where you can make more time for family. And of course I wish I could do more. I I don't think I still don't think I do enough, Mm -hmm. but I try more at least, uh, work life. I feel like I'm, I'm doing more. Yeah. Which, which is, you know, and then I'm, I'm not, you know, sometimes I feel burnt out. We all do. Mm-hmm. But I think challenges in, in being able to balance this, I would say between work and personal right now, I think I'm in a sweet spot. Good. Yeah. So That's I don't good. really have too much of a challenge. I'm trying to make time for everything and uh, you just have to be able to. Um, 100%. I completely agree with, with what you're saying. Why do you think discussing everything that we're discussing right now. Yeah. But within the entrepreneurship space is so relevant today. Why do you think that's like? Really good question. I think, especially today in 2023, I think it's, the reason I think it's very relevant is because we're in a place in time now where I think that it's, although it's not easy, but the amount of access and opportunities that one has nowadays to become a quote unquote entrepreneur is n- nothing like we have ever seen before. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's also very relevant because now there's so many people trying to go down this path that is very, very difficult. We have social media obviously now where you go on XYZ person's Instagram and they're traveling, they're in Turks and Caicos, they're in Italy, Europe, everywhere. It's like, oh my God, I want to do that now. And so now we're in a place that more people are experiencing this and now it's just become more more and more popular simply just by supply, right? So that's something that, that I've, I've thought about. And also the reality is, 
you know, Kevin O'Leary says this a lot is, you know, this isn't, this is not cut out for everyone, this kind of lifestyle. It's not easy. You know, there's ups and there's downs, but it's just a choice. You know, are you willing to kind of go through the fire? And then when you think you go through it, you go through it again. And, you know, that's why I like what you said before, where it's, you know, and this is something for me personally, where it's, it's a lot of people say this, but I feel like because a lot of people say this and it's said so often that it sometimes loses its value, but it's so important. The people you have around you, like Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably, if not the most important thing, like right under number one, you know, like the actual people that you talk with on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's 24 seven, like if you're talking to someone every single day or even three to five times a week, Mm -hmm. like those kinds of people that you're talking with, like they influence you so much. And whether those are good things or bad things, mm-hmm. you know, and that can drastically affect your, your mental health, you know, so you want to be able to kind of surround yourself with people that are on, not only on That's the really same point. wavelength, but like to have the same ambitions, you know, so now we are all kind of experiencing these problems together. Yeah. So now it's not like you're in a corner. You can, you can have relate to the problems. You can like, they maybe have experienced something different or more or worse and mm-hmm. can give you, can navigate you, can yes. steer you in the guidance. In, 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 yeah. Some feedback, you know, I mean, we, even <clears throat> you and I, you know, I've actually uh, many times and you know, whether it's for advice, uh, guidance, um, or even just like, yo, like, how do you think about X, Y, and Z, what I've been doing, mm-hmm. you know? And when we have those conversations, sometimes the reality is like, they're not like that pleasant. Yeah. But it's, you know, and it's necessary. It's necessary. And also like for me, I want that feedback. Yeah. Me you too. Know? Well, like, I, it's, it's almost like a true North where, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, you're, you're older than I am. You've probably experienced a lot of the things that I'm thinking or that I've, I've kind of gone through and everyone needs those kinds of people. Yeah, I that's the same thing too. But I like I also think that but same thing. Like I, I have I have similar people that, that yeah. have like let's say I let's say if I feel like you've gone through something or maybe you can relate to it, we talk about it. I'll ask you. Yeah. Like same 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 kind of feedback. Mm-hmm. But then same thing, like I, I have certain people that I would tap into if I know that they are dealing with something or they have significantly more experience um, yeah. in that and it's just healthy. You know, it's healthy to have that be a regular part of your MO, you know, but how would you say your mental health, Mm -hmm. right? Influenced your decision making progress in your uh, like decision making process in your business journey. How would I say my mental health has influenced my decision making process in my business journey? Hmm. Well, something that I've learned over probably the last five years, Mm -hmm. personally, is I have learned to not make any important decisions Mm -hmm. um, without taking at least 12 to 24 hours to kind of mull it over. Um, and the reason I've now kind of practiced that is because, you know, I kind of pride myself on being able to logically think about a particular situation or let's say a particular decision very logically without kind of attaching any emotion and just being more like pro and con oriented. But even with that said, like normally, even though you may feel like you have after 24 hours, let's say you know, those feelings, um, or what you thought was the result might change. Mm -hmm. So like for me, kind of bring it back to your question of mental health, you know, you can't really make any important decisions, uh, because if you're feeling, uh, stressed or let's say you have feelings of anxiety or even on the other side, if you're very happy, you're very, um, optimistic, you know, based on those feelings, you know, the, the decision that you make, maybe it's a bad decision. Yeah. You know, so I think it's very important to kind of understand, again, coming back to understanding yourself, mm-hmm. how you work, and then just being able to kind of diagnose these things. Yeah, I mean, there's a big impact of, you know, mental health has on the entrepreneur's productivity, you know. Without so, a doubt. So when we're talking about entrepreneurship and mental health, uh, 
everything comes into play you know that creativity productivity decision making process well do you think there's a connection between mental health and creativity uh yeah i think i think being an entrepreneur is is like carrying a heavy backpack you know okay uh just you're responsible for the weights that you put inside of it okay and the heavier it is the the heavier your mental health gets mm. you know and i think that we are so um we're so engulfed in the hustle culture where we sometimes forget the you know the part where it is maybe killing our creativity you know it, it just overtakes like the hustle culture the toxic side of it is all about money yeah go and go 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 now 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 correct so when you're talking about a connection between mental health and creativity um and we're talking about the world of entrepreneurship within that mm -hmm. uh you know i think that that's the the high stress and mental health issues can definitely affect the creative and innovative minds mm -hmm. you know so um I, I think fear also can be a play into that as well where if let's say your mental health isn't a good spot okay. so now you are let's say you're whether you're stressed too stressed anxiety field again those two things kind of lead to to doubt which ultimately leads to fear so now as you're trying to be creative mm -hmm. it's like hmm once if it doesn't work or no, that's a stupid idea. I think I also, I mean, what do you, is that a valid point? I yeah. Mean? I, I mean, what do you think? I think, uh, I think, it, I think it's, uh, it's definitely a factor. hundred percent. I think so. I think it's a factor for sure. People have, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation is people just are too scared to do certain things, you know, and that, that fear stops them from doing things. And we talked about this in, uh, in, in the episode with Billy, where, where we said, you know, just, just, you, you will never, you can never predict the future. So you, you just mm -hmm. need to be able to go in and do it. I mean, but man, fear, uncertainty, doubt, um, responsibilities, expectations, all these factors play into your mental health, just creates a very clouded, high stress environment within your head. Uh, that makes you think that man I need to stop it or maybe I should quit or maybe I should yep. maybe I'm doing the wrong thing and just makes you question all these different things that are going like these things For in sure. your head just starts popping up right and it's very difficult to be able to navigate that we've all been there right this is our world essentially mm -hmm. do you well now that you say that mm -hmm. do you think some of your you know entrepreneurial experiences have affected your mental health you know eat and I mean, if so, do you even, do you have, a, let's say a particular example potentially? Like affected as in what, like good or bad? Either. I mean, I would say let's go with, let's go with bad. Cause I think the, the good ones I think might be a little bit more obvious. Let's say. Yeah. If you're comfortable, of course. No, of course. Um, yeah, I would definitely say that from a, I don't know. I kind of like to see my mental health journey. It's kind of like a phoenix rising from the ashes and not to be corny at all. Okay. Right. I know I use a lot of analogies like this or metaphors, whatever. But the reason why I say is I, I started my journey a decade o over a decade ago mm -hmm. and I started at a high, right? Everything was really good. You know, we, we, we had a lot of growth and traction and then it went down and then I started the next venture and um, and that, that was at a peak and then went down. Then I dealt with personal life. I mean, it's up and down, right? It's a, like a roller coaster. Um, a lot changed for me when I lost my, my brother. That, that mm -hmm. affected me and then it went down, you know, and then it just, um, I think at the, at the lowest of the lows was within the recent years where I, if I take a step back that and I look at it on a scale of one to 10, how bad was it? It was at like a 20, right? Yeah. And I could tell you that it was at a point where I wasn't seeking help. I have seek help before that. So I like to look at it as like a phoenix rising from the ash without sounding corny or cheesy because what happened after that, it makes me look back. And I'm talking about this year, right? The, right. the progress and the reflection. I feel like this has been the place that I've been at, the place that I'm at right now, no matter what you throw at me. I'm not saying I'll have an answer for it, but I'll be able to handle it significantly better. Now I might not display it, and I might, but internally I am 
managing everything significantly. Like I'm, I'm sitting a lot more happier, you know, good, or I just feel man. like I can handle. Like I'm, I'm, like, am I happy with with where it is right now? I am. Is it the best that it can be? No, it can always get better. But the okay. reality is, like, with the amount of things that I've gone through personally, and you know this, and what we've also gone through together, right? Um, there is an immense amount of pressure that comes with it, and it's just, it just, I feel like it's a, uh, it, 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 you know, th- there, there is no good or bad. That's just, that's just the journey. That's just mm-hmm. how the chart looks for me. You yeah. know, what can you, can you um, share a little bit about? You know how me- how where you were faced with a mental health challenge and how it shaped your entrepreneurial journey. Like, if you would like to share, yeah, I think one thing that I have learned through like my personal like journey, but then also like my ups and downs, where like obviously I'm a little bit more of like a younger guy, yeah. And so, from an experience standpoint, I'm more on the side of I've had my nose is so. I know producer yeah. James is getting very frustrated with yeah, me. Pr- yeah, producer James is not going to like that. It's it's very itchy. But anyway. It's okay. You um, were saying. So, more so, like a lot of my like journey, um, especially in the beginning and, and even now, has been a lot about like opportunities. And when I was like younger, um, I was almost in the mindset of like opportunity almost kind of equals like a good result. Okay. And so when a lot of times when I would get a particular opportunity, I'd be very optimistic, you know, very happy. And obviously when you get a cool opportunity that you're interested in, yes, you're very happy. But when that starts kind of bleeding into clouding your judgment potentially, um, and then even being in a place where when it doesn't work out, you, you now you're really, really low. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning of like my career and like my entrepreneurial journey, like I had probably about two to three of those kinds of situations back to back to back Mm -hmm. so i was up down then when i was down i would look for the you know okay we're coming back now i would up down up down and so i really learned that when things are going good just to kind of stay like really calm no matter how good they are just stay really calm and even when they're going bad like stay really calm. It's all like for me, it's, it's a lot about kind of managing like that, that baseline that you have. Now it's okay to kind of waver a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you have to have to manage the baseline. You can't be going up and down, up and down, you know? So, but I mean, that's a muscle that you've developed over the years through pain. Can you think about a particular time or moment? Yes. That, you don't have to maybe I, that you can allude to sure if you feel comfortable sharing yeah um that that you would say was at a peak and then depending on the crashing inf- down depending on the information no i'm not talking about a high in terms of your mental high like good feelings i'm sure. talking about maybe the lowest that you've that you've dealt with and how'd you navigate around so that. i can remember probably one of my first startups that i ever did uh-huh um I'm like 18 or 19. We started getting all the prep work done. It's like starting to go really well. Mm-hmm. And I was ecstatic, like obviously very happy. I'm, you know, again, I'm very young now, but from a mindset standpoint, I was very young. Mm-hmm. Had all the ambition in the world. Mm-hmm. And then it, it came crashing down in one phone call. I can remember this like it was literally yesterday. I'm in my car. It is Thanksgiving Eve, midnight person calls me tells me x y and z you're not doing this you did this how'd you feel hung up it was over on that call and even even kind of alluded to i've already been kind of taking these steps and i'm not going to say you know did me dirty let's say but no what no matter the case at that moment Mm -hmm. i was it was like a dagger an absolute it, dagger. It seems like, even though this was years ago and you were so young then, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like that was a moment that you've, I feel, you've t- mentioned this to me before. You've yeah. told me, and mm-hmm. I feel like it stands out to you. It's really interesting how it does, right? You know if what? It, like, it, I appreciate that because the reason why it stands out is because during that time for me, I never even, it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That situation that, that happened to me, I didn't even know that that was even a potential to happen. 
And so that was such a big eye opener for me. Now during that moment, do not get me wrong. I was like in a place like where my, my doubts, my fears, anxiety, even maybe even like a form of depression was very, very real. I had no confidence in myself for the next and probably 30 to 60 days easily. Okay. Didn't know I'm a failure, I'm this, I'm that. But throughout that process, and again, as I look back on it now, I wouldn't change it for the world. That I has mean, you're chalking it as uh, as part of life and experience, and you learned so much from it. Did you talk to anybody? Did you, how'd you deal with their way too young? to um, You didn't know any better. Because I feel like a lot of people go through that. A lot of people can relate to what you're saying, you know? like um, Honestly, no. I didn't talk to anyone about it. Um, I... I mean, now the I adult was version of you, I know. I was so very insecure. I was insecure about really two, I think two main points in mm-hmm. particular. Number one, people would think that I, how could you let this happen to you kind of mindset. Yeah. Judge you. Yes. Yeah. And then number two, I don't really think I was even, I think I was just too insecure to even talk about it with anyone. And I don't even think, maybe I was, I was in the mindset of, no one can help me. Yeah. But then also it's not like I was looking for the help either. Yeah. I think uh, that's a really good point on that, on that particular note, man. If you're young and you're listening right now and you can relate to what Jack is saying and, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's a pretty big common problem that people go through. It's like yeah. they internalize, they just keep it internal and they think that people are going to judge me. I made mistakes. This is mm-hmm. stupid. They're going to think I, I, I'm not capable of it. Um, there's no shame and being able to admit that you messed up and Mm -hmm. um, you're learning from it that's the you the act of you doing that is Mm -hmm. you learning from it without a doubt and I could tell you that I've had similar experiences with the way that you have had not maybe exactly but in terms of when when I was young and how I felt yeah Uh, the fear of like what would my family say what would people say that was in my head Mm mm-hmm I don't think it matters. I think that, you know, this is something that you're going to learn over the years. At the end of the day, if people around you care care for you and love you for who you are. Their only concern is th- the root is always going to be that they just want you to do good, you know? Yeah. So as long as you think, unless you've got a really shitty family, then that's a different story. But they're, they're hopefully reality. you have some good friends. Hopefully you got some good friends. I just think that it's 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 okay. It's okay to be able to acknowledge and... Um, address it just put it on the map you know mm-hmm. um instead of just keeping it hidden and i think both me and jack we've 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 made these mistakes in our past and i think now the adult the grown versions of us know how to handle things a lot better so i think on that note we'd like to i, I think i'd like to cover a little strategies and tools on yeah. on how we can maintain you know yeah this so want to start uh, yeah i mean in a nutshell i guess uh what what did you I guess let's talk about work for a second, right? Okay. How did you how how did you manage your work life mm-hmm. in the middle of a hectic schedule, right? Because there's a couple things I want to cover here. I want to okay. I, I want to navigate around work okay. specifically. Okay. Uh, I also want to talk about the work culture. Okay. And then just how we where we are because I feel like we've alluded to how we feel and how we're managing things. Okay. So you particularly, I guess. Um, how do you how do you figure out work mm-hmm. w- with within w- with a hectic schedule like a balance right between work and and personal life no you're personal just work right oh how when do you, I navigate you have, through na- the through a very sorry how do you navigate through okay. a very hectic schedule I think personally for me organization is probably at the top of that list being organized because as I got. M- as my schedule started to become very hectic, mm-hmm. you know, for for a while, I I was organized, but I was also in the mindset of kind of keeping that checklist, let's say, in okay. my head. Mm-hmm. So I would try to remember it mm-hmm. a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And so what I learned as as I started to you know, whether it's take on more responsible uh, responsibility here, um, partake in other outside ventures is that I figured out and learned something about myself where I would initially think that I can just remember it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's step one. Then step two is 
me stressing out because I think I can remember it, but now I'm stressing myself out because what if I forget something? Yeah. Okay. And then the third step of that is, okay, I think I've done everything, but now it's, you're stressing and it's the fear of, did I forget something? So it's all, again, it's, this is all going on inside my brain. So to kind of, again, more circle back to your question, I think at the top it's, it's organization Mm -hmm. and scheduling Mm -hmm. and writing stuff down because that will take the mental load off of you. And this is something like a lot of it I, I learned from you. You do a really good job at this is you're very organized with your agenda and especially your schedule. Thank you. Bro. Um, absolutely. Because again, for depending on like what you got going on and like what your lifestyle looks like and what you do, like you might be able to just kind of mentally check. But for me, I was putting on so much unwarranted and unnecessary stress on myself where it's like even, you know, not that we clock out, but when it's seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock, even midnight, my brain is so going yeah, and I'm running through the checklist. Okay, did I do it? Do I do yeah. it? Where if it's written down, you have an agenda, you have a checklist, yeah. you refer to it, you look at it and it's like, hey, it's a ga- I checked everything off. I can it's now a game changer. relax for a bit. Now, no, let's, let's not, let's, let's get something straight here. I'm going to wake up and do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. But you'd be surprised about what those two, three, four hours can kind of do for you where it's like, you just have breathing space compartmentalizing things i mean yeah i it's, mean it, maybe we should do an episode about that like just how to manage you know uh tips and sure. tricks and things like that because i think there's some high level hacks that we can definitely share that Easily. you can apply even if you're not an entrepreneur you know just um things that we've learned that we've picked up and that has exponentially helped both me and jack yeah uh but that's 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 a good point yeah i mean and also i guess just to kind of wrap that up because I, I feel like so strong about this because it, it really has helped me. Okay. Is, you know, those three or four hours I mentioned before. Okay. Right. That like you're free. You take yep. that sigh of relief. Yep. Like those could be the times that like whether you're spending it with your family, doing something that you love or yep. a hobby, mm-hmm. you're more dialed into that. You're more mm-hmm. present, mm-hmm. you know, with that because you know in the back of your head, I've kind of done everything I need to. Yep. So now that family time, it's like. I'm here. I'm mm-hmm. very present. I'm actually very engaged. You're not flipping back and forth. Well, it's not like I'm sitting there. I'm having a conversation, but in the back of my mind, I'm I'm you know I'm running. I'm you know organizing my day for for Thursday because I know I have a big meeting or something. Right. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. that stuff is prepped. Time has been allotted for that, and I can kind of move on. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, what about you? And I guess based on that same question, can you kind of you know share some some tips or some insight about that? Yeah, I just think that. Uh I, I, you know, I guess we, one of one of the biggest things is uh, exercise, fitness, okay. both both mind and body. Okay, uh, you know, exercise is not just for your body; it's it's for your mind as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that I learned that. I mean, I I told uh, through the course of this episode, we've talked about how what my mindset used to be and where it is mm-hmm. right now is 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 a healthy body, house is a healthy mind. Yeah, and. Um, I think it, it, it's a combination of a lot of things that I've done this year, but I think that if you can prioritize, and, and I, I don't even think it's if you can prioritize, you should prioritize getting active, getting healthy, and um, meditating, you know, de stressing, uh, visualizing, focus on things that matter in your life, your goals. Um, and all these elements have this chemical play this 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 role in your body within the chemical neural impulses that you are incapable of understanding uh, mm-hmm. you know and it just does this sort of magic within your internal systems that you'll only find out once it becomes a habit and once you once it becomes a Commit system that you can fo- follow and when it does happen and let's say you st- unplug and you stop doing it for a week you're going to crave it and you're going to feel like, man, I was a lot more healthier when I was doing that. I was able to ha- handle stress and work and manage, uh, you know, all these issues that I deal with a lot better. Believe it or not, I, for over the last four months, five months with the, with the, with the intense, hardcore, um, mental, physical challenge that I've put myself through. We're talking about working crazy hours and on top of that, fitting in two workouts a day. Mm-hmm drinking uh, a gallon of water healthy habits and everything else it's you are left with maybe 30 minutes in a day but at the end of it it's so fulfilling yep and even when i'm off that program 
right now all the healthy components of that I, I've incorporated in my life and let's say I'm not doing it and I'm, I'm kind of treating myself poorly in a day or two um, it kicks into gear and it says that hey you, th- this to see feels off and my body actually stops starts feeling like crap mm-hmm. um, for sure like for example yesterday right this is a really good example yesterday after so I was sick for half of this week and um, the two days that I was sick, I barely got, I mean, one of the days I got a workout in, but the other day I didn't, and I didn't go out and do anything, and it was, I, I wasn't dr- dr- drinking my gallon of water, it was just, it just felt like shit, right, and then also, like, I didn't read my book, I didn't, I, you know, there's so many different components to it, and uh, yesterday I did the whole cycle, mm-hmm. and I felt phenomenal, mm-hmm. and I had a very, uh, my, my day started at, like, not, like 8 a.m., um, and, and my work started, let's say, 9 a.m., from 9 to whatever I was done, and I st- was still getting stuff done, but by the time I was done with my cycle, man, I felt amazing, and I felt yeah. like I could keep going, you know? Um, and 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 I, I fit in a little time with the family, so it was just like... Well, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What have been some ways that you have um, coped, potentially, but what are, we, what are some ways that you think you have been able to successfully kind of deal with Um, you know some stresses anxiety or just understand your mental health and kind of take control of it whether that might be seeking out professional help or maybe you have a hobby of some sort or you think you can share some way that you have kind of tackled that aspect of your life yeah absolutely I think that um, without any professional help if 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 that's where you are Mm. There's two spectrums to this, right? Okay. I, the way I see it. Without any professional help, um, if it's just you on your own and you, that's the path you want to follow, I think the, the quickest you can figure out a routine and a system that you can stick with, that you're comfortable with, that you're going to do without fail, um, that's both healthy for your mind, body, and soul, You know, fitness, meditation, mm-hmm. just everything, right? Um, and, and consistently do it without fail, and yeah. keep that a part of your habit that will that will prop most likely be one of the biggest tips that I can give you from from a uh, just, just improvement in mental health scale now yeah. professionally therapy and counseling uh, are not admissions of failure mm-hmm. like a, a lot of people have this taboo thinking that man I like I'm a wuss I shouldn't be doing this but the, they're just tools to help navigate the challenging uh, landscape of the entrepreneur lifestyle and that's just what it is and there's there's no shame in that so i think that yes if you think that you are beyond um, or you don't have that help within your personal life or friends or or even yourself seek help there's no shame in it for sure do you have any coping mechanisms i'd say for a stressful day or you know when you feel anxiety or sauna okay i think that de-stresses the crap out of me Mm -hmm. um good 20 30 minutes in the sauna even if my mind is really heavy when you're sitting in the hot heat yeah i feel like the toxins out of my body just gone when i come out take a cold shower i feel really good you know i would agree with that what about you i like the sauna the sauna is a good one yeah for sure a lot of times i kind of look forward to it what are you looking at there's a massive spider behind you dude in that in that window you always you always got something going on here (laughs) jeez um Uh, wait till wait till we're done wrapping this episode and you see this guy it's climbing all over that window oh my god hell but but i would say like sauna for sure um and you know people might think i i'm like uh kevin spacey here in house of cars but uh for me also you know, pl- spending an hour, two hours, you know, on some PlayStation is, has also been really good for me. I oh, use yeah. that as a time for me as like a, a complete unplug where oh, I don't uh, have to think about anything. I'm kind of locked in. I enjoy it. Uh, I play with friends. You know, I, I play with you yeah. a lot of times and um, I like it. It's fun. Yeah, I didn't even think about you. that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It, it is a good tool. Now, there's a, there's a fine line between. Well, you said it right there tool it's a good tool it's a good tool that's it that's all it is mm-hmm. unless you're, you're making you're money from it sure it shouldn't it shouldn't be something that you do for six hours in a day sure you know? correct but, but if you know how to control it because i actually used to be like really bad with it okay where it kind of took over a lot i did it too much okay so then at one point i ditched it i literally like went into like the the room where it was took it out and threw it out 
like literally one day oh, that's, that's good I was sick of it. <laughs> I mean, if I'm you like, realize that yeah I'm like i can't do it anymore it's it's it I, this is getting too much i literally went took it unplugged it and like threw it out and for like six months straight i didn't touch it until i felt that i was now mature enough maybe but also like had the self-discipline to say okay i can have it back now but now it's controlled <laughs> i'm not like i'm being for real no it's I'm great i love real. i love so now it's a tool yeah it's like okay it's almost like maybe a reward but it's like you've earned it have yeah fun. I, I really hope a lot of people see the value in what you're saying honestly it's it's a lot of yeah. self-reflection and and, yeah, man. and maturing and a lot of people don't man and a lot of people don't see it's that as real so. as it gets it's love as that real as it gets any final thoughts here man final thoughts I think my final thoughts would be everyone is going through problems that you have no idea about. And then also on the other side of that is you'd be surprised about what people have gone through. So you should definitely, you know, kind of nurture the relationships you have with some of your, your close circle, your close people and start to have those conversations Mm -hmm. because you never know who might've had something similar or even worse that when you speak to them about it and you're open to them about it, about the issues and problems that you've been facing, they might have some really, really sound advice. Um, you know, and then the, I think the only, uh, only other thing would be you're loved for sure. Mm-hmm. And if people, if you're sharing these things and people are judging you, you have the wrong people around you. If they truly love you, they won't judge you and they'll help you and try to you know do everything they can to get you back on track. Those would kind of be well, my, uh, my closing thoughts. How about you? Any? Yeah, same. I think, uh, you know, you you are, you know, pretty much the company you keep, you know, and I think that that's that's really important. If you feel like it's not being reciprocated enough in your in your day to day, in your environment, change the environment. Yep. You know, um, I've done that years ago where I've cut a lot of toxic people out. I've cut a lot of people that were just not adding any value to my life and my goals. Yeah. I, I narrowed down my circle and my friends to a very tiny group of friends that I can count with one hand and mm-hmm. then stuck with them for over a decade. And they're going to be people that are going to be by my side over, you know, the next 80, 80, 90 years that I'm on earth unless, um, you know, we figure out anti-aging but the reality is there's someone working on that i don't i don't want me to cut you off but yeah i know but i think that i think that uh it's also like important to get 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 a system like that figure out your figuring out figuring out your environment is very very key to having a, a successful healthy mental health set completely agree saj out love that well as we kind of wrap up here, you know, for anyone that that's watching, you know, we, we appreciate you uh, as always. You know, really hoping this was more of a, you know, personal esque episode. Uh, you know, Saj and I kind of sharing some stories here. You know, hoping uh, you know if we if we helped you or gave you some insight. And uh, you know, no matter where you are, mm-hmm. day or night, enjoy, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, venture hustles, life is really what you make it Building up your brand, it's whatever you created uh, Really ain't no limit, uh, you just gotta love it uh, Working day and night, it's all about the venture hustle Hey, venture hustles, time to take it to the next level Let's go